We have ourselves a DOT Pure Fiction, and as someone who hasn't pulled for any limited DOT units, it was a bit of a struggle at first. But if you look at the enemies on the first half, you'll notice that there are a lot of wind weak enemies, which is really good for Blade. And there's also enemies that apply a bunch of DOTs onto your characters, and that's also really good for Blade because it allows him to launch a bunch of follow-up attacks. And therefore, on the first half, I run my Blade J team along with the Robin Gallagher combo, and that got me 40k points. But Blade doesn't only work on the first half. If you look at the second half, you will notice that every single enemy is weak to... Well, not every single enemy, but majority of the enemies are also weak to wind. So this is also super good for Blade. And then on the final wave, which is usually like the tricky part, there's a bunch of these frogs that are weak to quantum. And then you'll notice on a Blade team, you run Jade. And so Jade is able to one-shot all these little frogs and then spawn in the elites so Blade can just deal with all of them at the same time. That's really, really good. If I run Blade on my on the first half, I'm obviously running my Acheron team on the second half because that's the, the unit they're trying to sell, Acheron. But when I run Blade on the second half, then I'll need Gallagher for my first half Himago Super Break. And so Gallagher can't be used on this clear and so I replace Gallagher with Branya. So in this video I'm going to show you how I get a 40k clear using blade on both halves so that you can pick and choose which side you want to use your blade on because this pure fiction is really 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 good for blade. Now I'm going to jump briefly into the character details before I go and show you the clears. So my Gallagher is running if it will load quid pro quo which the sole purpose is to battery Robin, and then the rest of his build doesn't matter too much as long as he doesn't die and he can do enough healing. My Gallagher's at E4, I don't really think the Eidolons matter. His sole purpose in this team is to battery Robin, and so I'll jump to Robin. My Robin is not on an attack build. Because on the second half, I'm running a no sustain team, I need Robin to be tanky enough so that she won't die throughout the whole course of the fight. I'm running her on the Branya Light Cone because the energy is really good. And then obviously if you have Robin's signature, that's better, but I don't have the Robin signature and this is a Light Cone you can guarantee for free. These are her traces. Her relics are two piece attack, two piece attack, and she's at E0. I do have her E1, but I haven't activated it yet. And then Jade, you might notice if you've seen my other videos that her ratio has changed. I have one build where she's at 87 crit rate and 150 crit damage, and that's the build I use when I have Fu Shen on the team. If I don't have Fu Shen on the team, I'd rather have her be as consistent as possible, and so I upped her crit rate. She's E1 S1, and these are her relics, these are her traces. And then finally for Blade. On the first half, when I'm running Blade with Gallagher, I actually use an HP boot because all the DOTs being applied to him will trigger his follow-up attacks over and over again. And so I want them to hit as hard as possible. And he'll attack a lot of times regardless of if it's his turn or not, just because of how many DOTs are being applied and triggered. On the second half though, because I'm running Blade with Branya, I actually want to speed tune him so that when Jade buffs Blade speed, he'll be faster than Branya so I can do the Blade Branya Blade um, shenanigan. And so here I switch the HP boot to a speed boot, and that's basically all I do. HP boot on the first half, speed boot on the second half. And then finally for my Branya, my Branya's not the best. Um, <laughs> you don't want her too slow, but you also don't want her to be faster than Blade plus Jade speed. So here, Jade gives 30 speed, he'll be at 152. Branya just needs to be under 152. Dance 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 is important. This was the MVP of my second half clear and I'll show you why later. It doesn't matter if it's S3, S5, or S1, you just need one copy of Dance 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 to make this work. And then here are her traces. Her relics are basically rainbow because you can notice that I have broken kill here, but it's actually not active because I screwed up and didn't give enough effect res, but that, that's on me, <laughs> oops. And then she's E1. So that's my team going into it. Now I'll show you the clear, starting with the first half and then moving on to the second half. So starting with the first half, because we have Gallagher on our team, it's not as stressful as the second half because we have a sustain, so you're never really in danger of dying. But one thing to keep in mind with this half is 
you always want to let the enemy move if they can. So, for instance, here, I'm going to let both of these wolves act before I pop Robin's ult, even though Robin's ult's already ready. That way, I can just maximize the chances of Blade being hit. And even if Blade doesn't get hit, as long as your other characters aren't at risk of dying, the other characters getting hit also regenerates energy for them. So that's also a good thing. And since we have Gallagher on the team, it doesn't matter how low you get because you should be able to heal it back up. So the whole purpose here is to get hit as much as possible. That way you maximize your damage and you abuse like the action advance of the enemies against them. The rest of it plays out kind of how you would normally play a Blade Jade team. It's just make sure you're cognizant of how much health you have and then how much you can greed getting hit. It's all about managing your health bar and then managing um, your your blade stacks. I think the trickiest part is at the final wave. So all of this so far is probably straightforward and there, there's nothing too too special to note here. But just notice like how quickly Blade can do his follow-up attacks. And every time Blade does a follow-up attack, Jade can also launch one. And so this is a really, really good combo. And now he's ready to launch another one. So we're able to get around 15k before the end of the first cycle, which is just decent. It's not bad. Okay, these bugs are really annoying, and you can't leave them unchecked. If you just let them be, or you don't destroy them quickly enough or break them quickly enough, they're going to explode on you, and then basically they're going to stun your characters. And then with this team, you really don't want to be stunned, or at least... Gallagher won't won't be stunned because he has so much effect resistance, but if Blade gets stunned, he can't launch his follow-up attacks anymore. And that really sucks. If Jade gets stunned, it's not the end of the world because her stacks can cap all the way up to like infinity, I guess. Like there there's she can she can overcap as many stacks as she wants. So her being stunned isn't the end of the world. But with Blade, he can't do that. So you really want him to do a follow-up attack whenever he can. So I'm making an effort to try to kill them as soon as possible so that I don't get exploded onto, but I don't think I can guarantee that here. That paradise may be unreachable. Savor it for me. Yeah, one explodes and then blade is stunned. So I use Gallagher here to free him up. But I'm gonna get blown up again, right? Yeah, but I didn't get stunned this time, which was really lucky. I think that's that's a case of RNG working in my favor. Okay, but now we're on the final final wave. And so here, there, there's a bit of decision making. It's basically, if you think you can handle it, you want to advance the enemies as much as possible. If you don't think you can handle it, you need to make sure your Gallagher gets to go so you can heal your team before they die. So at the moment, my team is super healthy. So I don't mind just taking in all the damage. And then I use Gallagher to heal my Robin. And now Robin goes back into her ultimate. Okay, so I hold my Gallagher ultimate because it's my get out of jail free card. But I also... Right now is a very good time for Gallagher to funnel Robin. So I think that was... Yeah, so, so here I pop Gallagher's ult. And then he should be able to funnel Robin. No. Okay, here, here's where I think where the bug occurred, where the energy went to him instead of Robin. 
Because I think there's a bug with quid pro quo that it's not supposed to give energy to the wearer. But in this instance, I think, I'm pretty sure it went to Gallagher instead of Robin. Oh well. I don't think I played it incorrectly. I just think I got unlucky there. But, like, with everything, you're unlucky at points, but you're also lucky in other points, so. This half, there, there's not as much to really worry about other than just maximizing Blade's follow-up attacks and then making sure no one dies. It's not super exciting, but it's really fun seeing Blade get 5 stacks immediately when he takes his turn. So here, when he's about to move, that's 5 stacks immediately into a follow-up attack. Alright, so now we're down to the final enemy. And then once we kill him off, we'll have enough damage here to to nuke down Branya. Oh, and we get another follow-up attack. Look at how how nice that is. This this first half is really good for Blade. Do I break Branya here? I think I can. Yeah, that's nice. And then I wonder if I can, yeah, Robin ult. I guess I'll greed a blade attack first and then I'll Robin ult, yeah. It's sad we have to finish this off with Jade instead of blade, but everyone was full HP at the end, 40k. Pretty good, pretty good. Now moving on to the second half, which I think is more interesting. For the second half, because we're running no sustain, it's a lot more sweaty and you have to be much more deliberate with every decision you make. Here, your opening can go a few ways. Depending on who gets hit, you play it out a bit differently. All you need to do is avoid Jade being hit because Jade's the only one here that can't take a beating. And you need Jade alive for the final phase. If Jade gets hit early on, I would just reset until someone other than Jade gets hit. And then you can actually pop Robin's ultimate after using Blade's first skill because it counts as Blade already having taken his turn. And so you can action advance future Blade even though current Blade is still acting, which is kind of a unique tip that I'm not sure if everyone knows about. So the way I organize my team is Blade's the one I want to be hit the most, and then followed by that, they're in order of who wants to be hit. So obviously Blade wants to be hit so he can launch all his follow-up attacks, and then I want Robin to be hit because she doesn't have Gallagher here battering her, so the only way for her to gain energy is either your allies attacking or her being hit by the enemies. Therefore she's beside Blade. And then Branya. Because she's running Dance Dance Dance, it doesn't hurt to have her energy ready, but it doesn't really matter if Brawny gets hit or not. She's kind of like an HP sponge, she's just there to tank damage away from Jade. So if Brawny gets hit, it's not the end of the world, but I would prefer the other two to be hit. And then lastly, I don't want Jade to be hit at all. So, so far, everything has gone quite smoothly. And then the important part is getting to the final phase. So for here, oh, the trash can is one of the enemies that you kind of need to be careful of because if you let it ramp up, it can one-shot some of your characters, especially if it hits Jade. And so I try to make it so that I can kill off the trash can, but Obviously, if the trash can attacks, the best target is Blade, so I got lucky here. And now we're on to the final phase. 
So here you can see the little frogs that have quantum weakness. Jade is so vital here. She clears, you need to like wipe out all the mobs before you can kill Yanching. And so having Jade here, she can one shot all of the little frogs. And then it also has the benefit of spawning in the elites. And so when Blade does his follow-up attacks, he can hit all the elites and kill them down together. Also, Dance 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 becomes really important in this phase. So I'm launching all my attacks to action advance the enemies, and then once once all the attacks have happened, I'll then use Robin to then go ahead of them. So here I'll do Robin's ultimate. And then with Branya, I'm going to build the skill point and then prepare her for a Dance Dance Dance. So I'm going to hit an inconsequential enemy, and then I'm going to launch Blade's attacks. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to Blade ultimate here into a follow-up attack, into a Jade follow-up attack, into a Blade basic attack. And then I'm going to use Branya's ultimate to Dance 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 Jade in front of the enemies. That way I can do all of this before the enemies get to go. Yeah, so here, Blade's basic, into Branya's Dance Dance Dance. And now Jade gets to go in front of the enemies. So that's the value of Dance 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 in this team. When everyone is at zero action value, Dance 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 will just rearrange the turn order so that your unit can go first. And now here we just pray that Jade does not get one shot. And so far every everyone's hitting the other units, which is good. Okay, well Jade got hit by the little frog, but he doesn't do much damage, which is fine. And then Branya got stunned, but it doesn't really matter. Jade's the one that matters the most in this final stage, so. Yeah, Blade's getting hit a lot too, which is really good. Oh, we got hit again. Damn. Okay, I got really lucky on this run. Okay, now you, you do you see, like, Jade wiped out all the little frogs, so now we're left with three elites. And Blade can hit all the elites at the same time, which is so good. I'm pretty sure this is, if not the final wave of enemies. Okay, Branya is now getting low on health. And we have Robin's ult ready now. But I think I'm saving it, I'm greeting it for the end because we have two little frogs that won't kill any of my units at the moment. I free Jade so that she can start doing damage again. And then here I'm just making sure that I don't accidentally bring up anyone and then die to them. Because I can definitely wipe all these people, I have so much damage. Blade is almost max energy, everyone else is full energy. And now Jade is close to doing a follow up attack. Yeah, okay, so she doesn't do an attack here. I can build a skill point and then launch everyone up. And then here, Dance 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 becomes important again. Here I can do Blade Attack. I could do, well, Jade first so that I can maximize energy build on Jade, but Jade Alt into Blade Attack. And then I can use Branya's ultimate to Dance 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 everyone forward in front of Yanching. So I slow it down here because one for the cinematic and the other one to make sure I don't mess this up. So here the Dance 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 will bring up Branya. Branya will then bring up Blade and then I'll use Blade's ultimate basic attack and then follow up attack. And that should definitely be enough damage. Oh wait, I could do skill into follow up into ultimate. So I'm pretty sure I can kill with ultimate here. If Jay doesn't take the kill from him, yeah. Okay. Perfect ending, perfect ending. On the first half, we accidentally finished the fight with Jade, but here we get the cinematic ending. This was a lot of fun. I know that the MOC was difficult because this video is like 20 minutes long, but man, I had a lot of fun.